I started thinking about assessments and how to do them online in a way that was fair and that was consistent with how I was doing them in my on-campus class. And I realized I have closed book tests. That's what I always did was closed book tests in my on-campus class. Mm -hmm. And there is no way I can enforce something being closed book online. And so I said, well, what can I do? You know, I really don't like these written tests anyway. I feel like I have students every term who I know really know this material well, but just cannot take a test well. Mm -hmm. So what can I do to make this more equitable and more authentic? And I was reading an article written by a physics teacher, actually, and he said that he lets students redo their assignments, but they have to make an explanatory video with it. I said, that is genius. So I started making explain sections in my course. So instead of doing a written test, and I've actually expanded this to my on-campus class as well, I don't do, I, I do uh, written quizzes just so that students are ready to write code by hand. But I, instead of a test, no midterm, no final exam, we have these explain videos. So at the end of each module, students need to make a video. So they need to write original code. But if they can't write original code, they can use some other code. They'll just get a point deduction, right? Different level of Bloom's taxonomy. Um, they need to make a video that explains the concept. And I say it, it can't be just a toy example code. It, it needs to apply to some sort of real world example. Okay. Um, I require that students review each other's videos. So I also require that they caption the videos. I, I award a few points for captioning. Um, it's sort of hit and miss on, on whether students actually caption it. Most of them end up being YouTube auto captioned, which are fairly close. Um, and then they need to post their video on a discussion board. So I give them an overview of what needs to happen. I give them some recommendations. I tell them five minutes or less. Um, I do allow 10 minute videos for some of the modules that have a lot of concepts in them. Five minutes or less, um, I get videos usually from three to eight minutes. When they start to exceed 10 minutes, I stop watching them at five minutes and I tell students, you can remake this video if you want to improve your grade. I stopped, re I stopped grading it after five minutes. Mm -hmm. But I give them instructions and these are all of your wonderful instructions, Katie. Oh, yay. Some of them are I'll a little bit older. I, I think I linked to the, the at one, right? So here's the at one oh, playlist as well. So good. there's lots of resources for them to learn how to do screen capture. Some students prefer to use their own screen capture software. Um, they say, well, hey, I don't know how to get started. So I give them the start of a script, right? Hey, I'm presenting code that explains the concept of, right? The purpose of this code is, mm -hmm. and then say what they should do. And then instructions for how to review classmates' videos. So I don't ask them to grade classmates' videos. I ask them to review it. Mm -hmm. so I'm looking for at least three sentences where they use the sandwich method. So something that they like about the video, something they think could be improved, and then follow up with something that they like. Mm -hmm. um, I usually see reviews that include things that they like. They're a little more reluctant to suggest things that are improvements. Unless right. it's, uh, hey, you might want to use a different microphone. Um, make your font bigger so we can see it. And, yeah, it's not and so, so I, I have to remind students, okay, give us um, an, a recommendation for how to improve the content rather than the videography. Mm -hmm. And then I have some sample videos that um, previous students have chosen to share via a YouTube playlist so students can go see examples of what it might look like. Cool. And then here comes the actual assignment. So I say, hey, here's, here's what you're supposed to do, right? Demonstrate you can write a Java program. Do not use the interactions pane, okay? You don't have to, right? I, I give them the instructions of what to do for the video. Mm -hmm. um, I found that students weren't looking at the rubric, so I highlighted this in yep. yellow to say, oh, hey, go look yep. at the rubric, right? And so the, the rubric includes things like 
the code complexity. So if they don't write their own code, they lose some points. So the code mechanics explain how the code works, mm -hmm. the code purpose. Why is this code written? What does it actually do? Um, vocabulary, are they using the right terminology or are they using incorrect terminology? Um, some points for captions to encourage them to actually correct the captions. Uh -huh. And points for writing reviews. So this one's only worth 30 points. Most of them are worth 55 points, including the reviews. But this one's the first one that's a little um, little easier and it's sort of the practice one. Pretty much everybody gets full credit. And so you can see students post some videos and we start to see reviews. Mm -hmm. And the first few videos that are posted get a lot of reviews. <laughs> yeah. And then if we scroll down to the bottom of this, the last few don't get reviews. Right. But I also allow students to resubmit videos if they don't like their grade. And I get a few students who take me up on that offer. Mm -hmm. So I, the, the grading is pretty straightforward because I have a very detailed rubric. I just click on the appropriate parts. Sometimes I'll give them a little bit more feedback within the rubric as well. A trick for grading the videos with the, if you, if the video's on YouTube and also if the video is just directly embedded in Canvas, mm -hmm. you can play it at 2x speed mm -hmm. and still understand what students say, especially if they have captions. I ask students at the end of the term, I ask them, what's your favorite activity? What's your least favorite activity? What was most helpful to your learning? What was least helpful to your learning? Um, a large majority of the students say my least favorite activity was making the explain videos. They feel intimidated by it. And so I remind them it doesn't have to be perfect, right? This is practice. You're practicing talking about it. You're practicing to be able to go to a job interview. You're right. gaining job skills. And I tell them, I feel intimidated when I make a video too. Sometimes I hear from students, I had to restart making the video five times or 10 times. And I say, that, that sounds about like what I do as well. And then I get a take that I'm happy with that's good enough. And I said, it's also okay if you make a, a mistake in the video. Right? If you're talking and you say something wrong, just correct it and go on. It's okay. It's, it's real life. I understand that you might make mistakes. Those are all such great lessons. So how many videos do they end up making at the, by the end of the course? So I have seven modules that they make videos for, and then they make a video presentation of their final project as well. Uh, but, but so students say they don't like making the videos, but I didn't tell you the other part of it, which is I asked them what's most helpful to your learning and they say watching other students' videos. Mm. So although they don't like um, contributing, they don't like the process of making their contribution, they really appreciate the contributions of other students. Mm -hmm. And I try to remind students also that there's research that shows that if an expert tries to explain something to a novice, they're speaking different languages. But if mm -hmm. a novice tries to explain the same thing to another novice, all of a sudden it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So they can actually learn from each other better than they can learn from me. Yeah. I still want to provide videos to them so that they can hear the way the experts speak and they can learn how to start speaking that way. But I want them to learn from each other because they can explain things to each other much better than I can. Yeah, that is so cool. What kind of pushback do you get from students who say something like, I don't want to do this. This is not why I signed up for this course. This is making videos is not what I'm here for. I don't really get much pushback in that regard. I think that it's because I explain to them why they're doing it. Yeah. It's, it is essentially an oral exam that they can take as many times as they want before they turn it in. And then I give them the option to retake it after they get feedback from me as well. But it's also good practice for an interview. I tell them, hey, you can become a YouTube guru. You can be the, the um, expert that everybody goes to to learn how to do this. Now, some of the uh, videos are unlisted, but a lot of them are the students choose to make them public. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're talking about code. They're talking about their understanding of the code. They're demonstrating that they have the ability to discuss code and mm -hmm. to write code. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, those are some really important skills that employers want. 